Hi everyone, it's Tanya. Today I have a bonus episode for you. And this episode is dedicated to kids age 6 through 10. Today's episode comes from Generation Carbon, the kids podcast produced by the Carbon Almanac Podcast Network. This is a network that I've had the opportunity to help out with for the past several months. In today's episode about bugs, you'll meet our host Edie, you'll meet Callie Caterpillar, and Spencer Sparrow. You'll also hear from dedicated science reporters and curious change makers asking our guest expert questions about bugs and our changing climate. If you're a longtime listener of this podcast, you may recognize our guest expert. Generation Carbon is a podcast created specifically for kids aged 6 through 10, and it complements the Children's Almanac by the same name. Both the Children's Almanac and this podcast are available for free at thecarbonalmanac.org. It's now my pleasure to introduce you to Generation Carbon. Thank you for joining us today. See you next time. Hey, Gen C Changemakers. This is Generation Carbon, the podcast where kids like you help grownups like us save the planet. Gen C Changemakers, we'd love you to get involved. If you'd like to submit your super scientific findings in a future episode, we need Gen C science-minded story reporters on the climate case. Have your grownups visit carbonalmanac.org slash kids to sign up. Today we have two science sparks, one from our change maker named Simon and one from our change maker named Aaron. What will happen to bugs if climate change gets bigger? Will it get smaller, even bigger, or extinct? I wonder the sun will make the bugs go away. Hey, Kelly Caterpillar. My friend Aaron was asking about bugs. Do you know anything about bugs? Ew, bugs are gross. Wait, aren't you a bug? I'm a caterpillar, thank you very much. I'm a sparrow, which kind of makes me an expert on bugs. Bug is a word for insects, and caterpillars are insects. And you, Kelly, are looking very, very tasty. I mean, nice today. Spencer Sparrow! Edie, help me! Don't worry, Callie. Spencer is not going to eat you. He promised. Don't get any ideas, Spencer. Be nice, Spencer. Ah, I will. Anyway, I want to hear more about what is going to happen to bugs. I heard they will get super big in warmer temperatures. Okay. Actually, yes. Warmer temperatures will mean insects will grow bigger and will need to eat more tasty green leaves to fill their bellies. And more for sparrows like me to eat. I wouldn't be too sure, Spencer. The warmer temperatures might make it harder for you to live where you do now. You might just have to live somewhere else and leave us insects alone. I wonder what that means for the farms growing food for people to eat. Huh. I guess that might mean insects will be eating more of the people food. Well, if humans run out of plants to eat, you could always try eating bugs. Oh, I highly recommend it. They're very nutritious, especially beetles. Oh, yummy, 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 yummy beetles. I think I'm going to stick to leaves. I've never eaten a bug before, but my teacher told me that some people in Southern Africa like to eat mopane worms. And my friend from Mexico loves eating chocolate-covered locusts. Mm, locusts. Hi, this is Beetle Lady Dr. Stephanie Dole, and I'm here to answer Aaron's question about bugs and climate change. Aaron wanted to know what will happen to bugs because of climate change. Will they get bigger? Will they get smaller? Or will some of them go extinct? So the first thing, Aaron, is that there are a lot of kinds of bugs on our planet. Entomologists like myself are working on a list of all the different kinds of insects that we have found on our planet. 
So far, we have one million different species of insects on that list, but we know that the actual number is bigger than that. We predict that it's about five million insects, or maybe even more. So that means there's a lot of insects that I can't really tell you very much about what will change because we haven't even discovered them yet. The biggest thing that's likely to change is the ranges, meaning where the insects can live. So, for instance, as it warms up in the north. A lot of insects that live in warmer, more tropical areas are going to be able to move their ranges where they live more northerly. This could be good in some ways for the bugs because they can live in more areas, but it can also be really bad because some of these insects are pests. Some of them, in fact, even transmit diseases to people. And so, as we see it warm up in more temperate climates, we're going to see more bugs moving up north. And some of these bugs could bring with them diseases that we haven't seen very much of in places like North America. The other thing that might happen is a lot of bugs may lose their habitat altogether. For instance, there is a genus of beetles, a ground beetle. There are predaceous ground beetles. They're in a group called the carabid beetles, and this genus of beetles is called Nebria, and they live on the very tip tops of alpine mountains in places、um, in northern California and the Pacific Northwest. And these beetles' habitats are pretty restricted to the very tip tops of mountains because they like cold, rocky places on the tops of mountains. And eventually, those mountain tops are going to get warmer and warmer. And there may not be the right climate for these beetles to live, and they don't have anywhere to go from there. So they would maybe go extinct. And then remember that insects. Are really dependent on the entire environment that they live in. So what we could see with a lot of species is what happens is something like their host plant, or the animals, or plants, or fungus, or other things that they rely on on to live are going to go extinct or maybe change their ranges. Um, the good news is insects are very adaptable. There's going to be insect life on our planet, and so for many years we're going to see a lot of changes probably in the insect fauna、um, far into the future, further than any of us are going to be around、um, because of climate change. Because insects have survived for so long on our planet and are so adaptable. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much. And again, this is Dr. Stephanie Dole, Beetle Lady. And now from Toronto, we have two super scientific story reporters who have some serious findings on climate and bugs for us. Imagine you're sitting at a table in McDonald's. A huge burger lies on the plate in front of you, dripping with melted cheese and slimy tomatoes. You bring it up to your mouth, ready to take a huge bite, and crunch. The taste of bugs fills your mouth. That's right. By 2030, you may be eating bugs, and not just because of a futuristic culture, because of climate change, or what some people are now calling the climate crisis. Hi, my name's Tilly, and I'm Kate. We're here to talk to you about climate change. We have two big questions that we're asking today. One: Will we actually have to eat bugs, Tilly? Yes, and it's not our first time. Humans ate bugs for ninety-nine percent of our evolution, and may be going back to it soon. Finally, we have our second question: Can bugs help stop climate change, Kate? Well, kind of. Bugs can't really recycle or help pick up garbage in the park. But bad news for bugs: eating bugs can help stop climate change. You see, all these cow farts are going up into the air. And changing the atmosphere, but if we switch to eating bugs, then we won't need more cows, meaning less cow parts. Thanks for explaining. I get it now. Maybe I could get used to eating bugs, but no guarantees. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed our presentation about bugs and learned a bit more. Whoa, that was super interesting. Totally, I like the part about how many kinds of bugs there are, but it sounds like I'm going to have even more competition when it comes to finding bugs to eat. That part, though, I like the bit about cow farts. <laughs> Good point, Cali Caterpillar. The more they talk about cow farts, the less I want to eat a hamburger. I still say that leaves are the food of the future. Beetle buggers could be pretty good, though. 
As long as they aren't caterpillar burgers. Whether we stick with leaves or non-caterpillar bug burgers, it will be plenty interesting. If we all stop eating beef, that could help reduce climate change. And those stinky cow farts. <laughs> eating bugs may seem strange to you, depending on where you live. But things that I like to eat, like shrimp and lobster, may seem strange to you. Especially if you live in a different part of the world than I do. People have been eating insects tens of thousands of years. In Ghana, termites are eaten, fried, roasted, or baked into bread. And in South Africa, insects are eaten with porridge. In China, beekeepers eat larvae from their beehives. Dragonflies are boiled with coconut, ginger, and garlic and are delicious to the people of Bali. In Latin America, fire-roasted tarantulas are eaten. I'm a little nervous, but really excited to try new foods, even if they may seem strange at first, especially if it might help the planet. Our action plan for today is... Ask your grown-up if you can swap burger for a veggie, chicken, or bean burger. Or try cricket powder in your smoothie if you can find some. Sorry, crickets. What will life look like? in 2050. Hi, my name is Dahlia. I'm nine years old. I live in Canada. In 2050, I think cars will work with compost. Bonjour, mon nom est Dahlia. J'ai 9 ans. J'habite au Canada. Euh, en 2050, je pense que les autos devraient marcher avec du compost. Thanks this week to Aaron and Simon for their science sparks, Kate and Tilly for their super scientific story reporting. And thank you, Dahlia, for letting us know what you think life in 2050 might look like. Also, thanks to Dr. Stephanie Dole, the Beetle Lady. To learn more about bugs, visit beetlelady.com. And for more conversations about carbon and how you can help, head over to thecarbonalmanac.org. There are other podcasts in the network for grown-ups and lots of fun resources for Gen C changemakers like you. It's a scary topic, but we've got you covered because together we can make change happen. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Until then, let's change the world, changemakers. makers.